Today on Stock Charts in Focus, we're talking about how to prioritize the indicators and overlays on your charts. We'll take a look at how to build some visual hierarchy into the charts that you're using. Build a little bit of a visual hierarchy into the way that you are seeing the markets. We're going to reach into my own personal toolkit, show you how I do this on my own charts. Plus, we're going to talk about some very important things happening this month on stockcharts.com. So lots to cover on today's show. Of course, you know what it is. It's all new. It's all here. It's Stock Charts in Focus. All right, my friends, welcome to the show, Stock Charts in Focus. Of course, our product focus show here on the channel where we dig into the site, dive into the features, show you around the tools, talk about what's new, and of course, help you get more value out of stock charts. That's our mission here on this show every Friday. My name is Grayson Rose, Vice President of Operations here at StockCharts.com. So good to have you on today's show. I think we're going to have a ton of fun taking a look at something from my own personal toolkit. We do this occasionally sort of reaching into my own process, my own account, taking a look at some of the tools and features that I use. Today, what we're going to talk about is how to build, as we mentioned, a little bit of a visual hierarchy into your charts. We're talking about prioritizing the indicators and the overlays really sort of visually overweighting the ones that are most important to you and maybe sort of dulling down some of the ones that are a little bit less important to you. Now, we're going to do this in a couple of creative ways. We've got chart styles. That's our first stop. We're going to take a look at how to actually use chart styles to build this kind of visual hierarchy. And then we're going to dig into the charts themselves, take a look at some of the settings that you can use on the Sharp Charts workbench, also in ACP, applies in both charts, but some of the settings that you can use to actually sort of build this prioritization into your chart. So going to be a fun episode, some tools, tips, tricks, all that good stuff to show you. Before we do that, though, I want to talk about a couple of important things that are happening around stock charts this month. November, always a big one, and this month is no exception. So first up tomorrow, Saturday, November 6th, we've got a brand new special from Arthur Hill that's going to be airing on Stock Charts TV. I want to make sure that you're aware of it because this is going to be a very special presentation from Arthur, really digging into trend following concepts. Now, when I think of Arthur, I think of someone who is always insightful, always educational, always helpful, but so strategic in his approach, a long time trend trader as well. So when Arthur talks about a brand new special, all sort of digging into uh, trend following tactics and strategies, everything that we hear a lot of people talking about out there in the markets, my ears perk up. So a very, very exciting special there. Trend following, he's going to dig into theories, expectations, and realities of trend following strategies. Lots of great content coming up from Arthur tomorrow on that special. That's going to be airing live at 12 p.m. Eastern time on Stock Charts TV. Of course, we'll be up on our YouTube channel after that and the on-demand platform at StockChartsTV.com. So lots of different ways to watch, but make sure you mark your calendars for that special coming up from Arthur Hill tomorrow, all about trend following strategies. Now, next up, we've got a very exciting new feature rolling out on the site next week. I'm hinting at it this week because I'm so excited about this one. We're going to be launching a brand new relative volume plugin for ACP. So we're going to spend a lot of time covering that next week, but I wanted to let you know that is coming. Very, very exciting. A free plugin for Stock Charts members, three new indicators, all built around relative volume. So if you are a volume junkie, if volume analysis is your thing, next week's show is going to be a big one. This plugin is going to be big for you. If you're not a volume analyst, tune in next week. This might convert you. Relative volume, three different flavors of it. Very, very exciting stuff coming out next week. Now, lastly, I do want to remind everyone, this is November. Longtime Stock Charts members will know big things happen around the site in November. Cyber Monday is coming, our biggest sale of the year, biggest savings of the entire year. So I've said too much. I don't want to say any more, but I just want to let you know Cyber Monday is coming. Stock Charts members, mark your calendars. If you're not a current Stock Charts member, now is the time to sign up. You'll be able to take advantage of that special coming out later this month. So we'll have lots more info for you on this show, in the newsletter, around the site, 
every channel that we have, we'll be talking about that Cyber Monday special as we get a little closer to that date, November 29th, the Monday after Thanksgiving. Remember to mark your calendars there for Cyber Monday here. Always a big, big day on stock charts. So that's our little bit of housekeeping before we get into the meat of today's show. Hopefully some exciting stuff there, definitely some things to keep an eye out for. But now let's dive into our topic of today, which is prioritizing the indicators and overlays on your charts. As I mentioned, we're going to reach into my own toolkit, going to put my account on display, show you some of the charts and features and settings and all that stuff that I use in my own approach to the market. So let's get right to it. All right, my friends, we are starting on the Sharp Charts workbench. Now, we're going to do this show in Sharp Charts, but I want to let everyone know that this, all these concepts, everything that we're talking about today, it all applies in ACP as well. If we flipped over to ACP and I put sort of my setup for the, uh, the ACP platform on display, uh, all of these concepts, everything that we're talking about today would apply over there. So you can do all these same things in ACP. If we have time at the end of the show, we'll try to jump over there and kind of run you through some of that stuff. Uh, but we're actually going to use sharp charts on today's show. Of course, our original price charting tool, our legacy tool, uh, something that I still use heavily, heavily, heavily. Uh, many of us do here at Stock Charts. And we get this question a lot. We got big, big plans for sharp charts. Lots coming in 2022 to this, uh, this all important platform here. So I know we've been uh, doing a lot with ACP in recent months and uh, really in the last kind of year and a half, but uh, we do have huge plans for sharp charts. This platform not going anywhere by any means. We are going to continue to invest heavily in sharp charts. So lots of good stuff coming up here. But as we've uh, as we've mentioned already, what we're talking about today is kind of building in a little bit of a visual hierarchy to your charts. Now, we've all got the different set of indicators and overlays that we use. Some of us probably are using very, very simple charts like we have up on the screen here today, which is just price and a couple of moving averages. So in this case, we can still do a little bit of kind of visual prioritization on our charts. That's what we're going to cover today. But most of us have many indicators and many overlays on our charts. We've got a, a whole collection, uh, you know, a set of tools that we use as, uh, as kind of our go-to. So what we're going to talk about, though, is how to prioritize those. Because, of course, price is first and foremost, that's the most important technical indicator that we have on our charts as uh, as chartists, as analysts, as technicians. But everything else really probably has some sort of prioritization to you. Uh, you know, you've got price first, but maybe the second sort of confirmation for you is moving averages. And maybe the next one up uh, after that, maybe the next most important indicator that you have on your charts is the RSI. And then maybe something else is up next. So what are you doing to sort of prioritize those visually? Instead of just having everything kind of at the same volume on your charts, what are you doing to kind of set up your charts so that the uh, the different indicators and overlays that you have are sort of visually prioritized? So I do this in a couple of different ways. One of them we've actually covered on the show in the past, and that's what I call chart leveling. So I'm actually going to open up on the left side of the screen the uh, the chart styles menu. By the way, if you are a member, you do have access to all of these style buttons and this whole menu over here on the left, which is a great way to work with your chart styles. Chart styles are sort of the templates that you save all of the settings and everything into. So when you set up a chart, if you want to reuse that as kind of a chart template in the future, you can save that as a chart style. Those show up over here on the left side of the Sharp Charts workbench. So you can see all of the different chart styles that I have saved into my account. I have a lot of them. Uh, but what you can see up here at the top is something that we've talked about, as I mentioned, on the show in the past. I have a, a quote unquote leveling system to my chart styles. So the one that we're looking at right now is my level zero chart. It is a very, very simple chart. It just has price bars and a couple of moving averages on it. So this is sort of my first priority. My first priority is always going to be price. So I actually have a set of chart styles that kind of build in this priority order for me. The first one, as I mentioned, is just price. I want to stay focused on price. So when I have this very, very simple chart style up here, this is sort of my first stop. When I'm really kind of digging into a stock, when I'm digging into an ETF, my first stop is just what's happening on the price bars, what's happening on the price action. This chart style allows me to make that the first priority because as you can see, there are really no complex indicators or overlays or anything like that to kind of get in the way. Now, I do actually have another chart style that would be kind of 
uh, before this that's just the candlesticks, just the price bars. Uh, in this case, though, I do like to have some moving averages on my chart, but this is my first priority. So I've actually created this as what I call level zero. Now, I have a whole set of levels here that get more complex, bring in more indicators and more overlays as I go. So the idea here is that I keep things in sort of the right priority order for me. When I show up, I've got a new stock. Let's say I'm, I'm really interested in Etsy, kind of making this breakout. My first stop is going to be this level zero chart where I'm staying focused on the, uh, the pure price action. The next chart up after that is going to be my level one chart, which is basically the same thing. The only thing that I bring in is a relative strength line. So up here at the top, we've got Etsy versus VTI. That's the benchmark that I like to use. Uh, that's the, uh, the Vanguard total index represents the total US stock market. So I want to own things that are breaking out to new highs like Etsy is here, but I also want to own things that are outperforming the market, things that are actually leading us higher. In this case, you can see this relative strength line trending up, moving higher. That means that Etsy is outperforming the total market. So this is kind of the next priority for me. I want to make sure that not just the price action is looking good, but also the relative strength. I want to see things that are really outperforming the market, really leading the total market. So that's kind of my next priority on my chart. So that's why I have that as a level one. Now I can go to level two after that. I keep stepping up. And again, the idea is that I'm sort of building in additional indicators, additional overlays uh, as the next priority. I'm sort of building this priority in uh, visually. So here, my level two chart just brings in one additional indicator. I'll oh, actually two additional indicators. Uh, we bring in the RSI down here at the bot that the uh, the bottom of the chart, and we do also bring in volume. So I've added volume in here, pretty faded out. That's something that we're going to talk about in a couple of minutes. But uh, I bring in RSI and volume as sort of the additional two indicators there for level two. Now this is actually my default chart, so this is kind of the first one that comes up. Uh, I like to keep that in mind, but I I frequently use these little style buttons. You can see that I actually have the level zero, level one, level two, level three, and level four. For, uh, for my charts, I have those set as style buttons. So I'll bring this one up and if the chart is, uh, is looking good to me, I'll say, okay, let's step back, let's pause and let's get the right priority order. I can quickly jump back to level zero. I can start here and say, wow, the, uh, the price bars are looking really good. The price action is really setting up nicely. I like what I'm seeing there. What about the relative strength? I'll bring that in as the next one. Uh, so I can, I can uh, actually just click on that style button to bring that in as my sort of uh, next priority order. And then I can jump up to that level two. So these style buttons over here on the left actually make all of this very easy. But so I've got my next level up there. Uh, and then I go to level three. So level three, again, we're bringing in additional indicators, uh, some additional pieces of, uh, of data here that we can analyze as part of the uh, sort of total package. So in this case, at level three, I bring in uh, three additional indicators, actually accumulation distribution and on balance volume. I have those in the same panel, but I bring those in and I also bring in the scooter. That's our stock charts technical rank. So again, the idea here is just building in that priority order for your charts. Now we can go all the way up to my level four chart, which is the most complex chart that I look at. But think about what we've done. If we've started at that level zero and I go all the way down to level four, by the time I get to level four, I've had everything stacked up in the right sort of mental order for me. That visual hierarchy is actually kind of built into this series of chart styles. So I'm kind of stepping up to, uh, to that and building things up sort of in the right order for me. So here on this chart, what I do is actually bring in two additional relative strength lines. We've got our stock versus the total market, in this case, Etsy versus the total market. Etsy belongs to the consumer discretionary sector. So I want to say, okay, well, how is the sector that this stock is in performing relative to the total market? So I actually bring that in here. That's the green line. This is the, uh, the sector that, uh, that this stock belongs to versus the total market. And then the next one up for me is the industry group that it belongs to relative to its sector. So ideally, I want to be in something that's outperforming the market that is, uh, is part of a sector that's also outperforming the market and that's in an industry group that's outperforming that sector. If you think about that leadership, it's kind of four tiered leadership. Uh, we have something that is incredibly strong because it's leading the market, but it's also leading its industry group, which is leading its sector, which is leading the market. So that's kind of my total relative strength picture. I bring that in here at level four. Uh, there's a lot to unpack here. 
So again, by the time that I get here, I don't want all this information at once. I want to sort of build my way up to it. That's why I have these chart levels. But I bring in those relative strength lines down below. We have basically the same view. So that's uh, really the only additional uh, piece of data that I kind of bring in at this level four chart is just uh, the addition of those uh, those extra relative strength lines. So again, you can build in some visual hierarchy. You can sort of prioritize your indicators and overlays by building in different chart styles, having this kind of leveling system like I have. Now, if I open this back up, you can see that I do this also for weekly charts. So I have actually a couple of levels of my weekly charts, one that's really focused just on the long term price action. And then we start to build in additional indicators and additional overlays as we go. Uh, so I do this across different time frames as well. Uh, so that is our first stop on today's show. Hopefully that's given you a sense of kind of what uh, what we're talking about today, prioritizing the different indicators and overlays that you're using. There are a couple of different ways to do that. The first one is really to create those chart styles with the different indicators and overlays that are in the right sort of order for you. That is what I call my chart leveling system. And again, style buttons make this very easy because as I'm going through all of those chart styles, instead of having to kind of fumble around with them and know where they are in a menu or anything like that, I can just click boom, 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 boom. We go from zero to one to two to three to four. So it makes it very, very easy to access these chart levels as I go, as I'm kind of getting into my research process. Now, we're going to stop on this chart. And we're going to talk about how to actually build some of this prioritization, some of this visual hierarchy into the charts themselves. So let's take a look at this chart because there's some actually uh, pretty interesting things on here. First and foremost, we're going to start in the middle of the chart. We're going to start with the overlays. We're going to start with the main price panel. So one thing that you might have noticed on this chart is that I have a couple of different sort of styles of moving averages. Now, I do actually have one EMA, exponential moving average, and the rest are simples. But I don't actually mean that type of uh, moving average. What I mean is visually, I have a couple of different styles of moving averages on here. So if you look at the moving averages that I have on this chart, I have a 20 day, we're looking at a daily chart, 20 day EMA, 20 day exponential moving average. I have a 50 day simple, a 100 day simple, that's the orange line, a 200 day simple, that is the green line. And finally, we have a 400 day, a very, very long term moving average, uh, simple moving average, that's the purple line. So we've got blue, red, orange, green, purple. Now, not all of them look the same though, don't they? So I personally, in my approach to the market, the time frame that I like to trade, I find that the 50 and the 200 are the two most important moving averages for me. The 20, a little bit too quick. I like to keep an eye on it, but it's a little too quick for the time frame that I trade. The 100 kind of right in the middle there, a little bit uh, obviously below the, uh, the 50. Uh, that one is another one that I like to keep an eye on for sort of that intermediate term, uh, term trend. Uh, and then the 400 is the very, very long term trend. But for me, the 50 and the 200 for many, uh, many other chartists as well, the 50 and the 200 are the most important moving averages on my charts. The other ones are kind of secondary. So instead of having all of these moving averages at the same volume, uh, sort of the same visual volume, if you will, what I've actually done is I've highlighted the 50 and the 200 and I've sort of faded out the 20, the 100 and the 400. You can see that. Let's go down to the settings and I'll show you how you can do that. So if you can't see any of these additional settings, make sure that you've opened up that advanced options window, that little green button that'll pop open those additional uh, options for you, the uh, additional settings. So here on my chart in the overlay section, I've got all of those moving averages that we were just looking at. Again, that 20 exponential and then the 50, 100, 200 and 400 period uh, simple moving averages. Now in the style section, you, you can see that I've uh, selected a couple of different things here. I've set the 20, the 100 and the 400 to be thin dashed lines. I've got different colors selected for those, but I've set the style setting to be thin dashed lines for those. Again, those are kind of my secondary moving averages. The two that are most important are my 50 and my 200. So for those, I've actually selected solid thick lines. I want those to be the most prominent moving averages on my charts. I want the other ones to be a little bit sort of dulled out. Now in the opacity area, that's going to uh, going to sort of mess with the uh, the coloring, you know, how uh, how transparent, uh, how opaque is that uh, that indicator, that overlay, that line. 
So I've set those important ones to be a 1.0 opacity. That means they're gonna be full color, full blast, full volume. And then for the other ones, I faded them out just a touch. Now I could fade these out even more, um, but in this case, I've actually just faded them out slightly. So those are set at 0.8. So again, we've got these uh, style settings changed to kind of reflect the priority order of these moving averages. The 50 and the 200, much more important for me, the 20, the 100, and the 400, all secondary moving averages in my approach and my analysis, the time frame that I trade and all that. So I've actually built that into the chart itself to create that kind of visual hierarchy. So up here on the chart, just to give you one last look at how that looks, uh, when we use that uh, that dashed thin line setting, that's gonna look like that. You can see that with the, uh, the 20, the uh, blue line, the uh, orange line, the 100, you can see that here clearly with the 400 period. And making that uh, a solid thick line for the 50 and the 200 and making that full opacity, that makes those very, very clear, very uh, sort of obvious on the chart. So when I look at this, the things that stand out to me first are the 50 and the 200, which is what I want because those are more important. Uh, the uh, the 20, the 100, and the 400 sort of fade into the background. And when I say, oh, okay, where where's the 100 though? I can bring that up really easily, but it's not kind of the first thing that jumps off the screen at me. So I like to build this kind of visual hierarchy into my overlays and indicators themselves by using some of those settings down below. Now there's one other overlay that's actually set up as an indicator on my charts. And I've done the same thing. That is volume. You can see that right here. We've got volume. So let's go down to the settings there and I'll show you what I've done with that indicator. So I've added volume here in the indicator section of the chart. Now there's a couple different ways to add volume to your charts here in Sharp Charts. You can actually use this, uh, this menu up here if you just wanna quickly add volume. But I want a little bit more flexibility, a little more customization. So I've added volume down here in the indicator section. If we go across, you can see that in the position setting, I've set that to behind price. So that's gonna move volume from a standalone indicator panel up into the main price panel, gonna put it behind the price bars. Now, over here in the opacity area, I've set volume to be quite dulled out, quite uh, sort of faded out into the uh, into the background. So I've got the opacity setting here at 0.2. We'll scroll up and I'll show you what that looks like. Here on my charts, volume is secondary to pretty much everything else. I like volume. Volume is a, an important part of my approach. I do want to see these big volume spikes when something is breaking out on huge volume or breaking down on huge volume. I want to be able to see that but I wanna be more focused on the true price action in that price panel. I wanna be more focused on the price bars and more focused on how some of these key moving averages that I watch are, uh, are trading. So uh, in my charts, I like to actually sort of dull down the volume because again, that's a secondary or even tertiary uh, indicator for me. So by using some of these visual settings, I can actually create this visual hierarchy on my charts here. I can still see volume, but it's not prominent. It's not really, really clear. If we scroll down actually and update this chart, if I set volume, for instance, at 1.0 on the opacity, you can see that now the volume bars are much, much more obvious. Now to me, when I'm looking at this, the volume bars kind of scream at me a little bit too much. They get in the way visually a little bit too much for me. If volume is really, really important for you though, this might be better. This makes volume a lot easier to see and makes it really sort of jump off the screen at you. So again, you can sort of build some of this hierarchy, uh, build some of this prioritization of your indicators and your overlays into the charts visually. I find that this is a great, great way to sort of trick your mind and, uh, and set your charts up to really kind of start to work for you, help you help yourself, if you will. So I'm gonna go back down here, gonna set my volume back to be 0.2. We get back to that chart that we had up on the screen at the start. Now, we're gonna talk about indicators because we can do some similar things with our indicators. First and foremost, I wanna talk about indicator position. So you can see that on this chart, I have some indicators that are up at the top. I've got my relative strength lines up at the top. They are above the price bars. Relative strength, very, very, very important for me. Price obviously comes first, but relative strength is secondary uh, to price. That is absolutely the second thing that I look at uh, sometimes, honestly, it's even the first thing I look at uh, because no matter what, I want to be in things that are outperforming the market as Etsy is currently doing. So relative strength, incredibly important to me. 
So I reserve the space above the price bars, the space up the top of the charts for that ultimately important indicator, relative strength. I put these panels up at the top of the chart because that's the next thing that I want to look at, in some cases, even the first thing that I want to look at. So you can actually use the position of these indicators to, again, create this kind of prioritization on your charts. You're obviously going to look at the chart from the top down. So set up your chart so that you have your most important indicators at the top and your least important indicators at the bottom. Or at least maybe it's not, you know, most important and least important. Maybe it's just kind of what you want to see first. You want to see things in a specific order so you can build that into your charts. Now on my charts, I've got those relative strength lines up top. I have our other indicators down here at the bottom. So for me, the next up after uh, after price and relative strength is going to be RSI. Then I like to look at money flow through the accumulation distribution indicator and the on balance volume indicator. Those are both in the same panel, which we're going to talk about in just a minute. And then next up for me is that stock charts technical rank, uh, a very, very important, uh, again, kind of relative strength measure, looking at how something is uh, is trading relative to its peers. So we kind of bucket everything together and we can assign a specific technical rank to uh, to a specific uh, stock or ETF uh, or industry group. We actually do this for uh, for quite a lot of things. But we can use that uh, that stock charts technical rank to judge technical strength or weakness uh, in the case of low scooter score. So in this case, we've got Etsy up with a high scooter score, 95. That's very, very good. Tells us that Etsy technically is very strong and is strong relative to other stocks in its group, which is the uh, the large cap group. So anyways, I've got this order built into my charts and I've set up my charts to have this very specific order. Now, the way that we do that is by using this reorder section of the indicators area on the Sharp Charts Workbench. So again, we uh, we set our indicators up in a couple of different ways. We can do that down here at the bottom. And we actually use position and reorder to, uh, to really kind of do this in total. So you can see that here are those relative strength lines. In this case, I, uh, I want to actually view those as a, a, a percentage scale. So I've set these up with the price performance indicator. That's going to put it into a percentage scale. And I've got my relative strength parameters in here. Uh, symbol versus VTI. You can create these um, uh, ratio symbols by using a colon between the two symbols. That's going to compare uh, one symbol to another. So in this case, I'm comparing the symbol on the chart to VTI. I'm comparing the, uh, the sector of that stock to VTI and then the industry group uh, of that stock to actually if I uh, sort of click over here. You can see that industry group to the sector. So that's how I've set up those relative strength lines. But I've positioned all of those above. Now, this position column tells you where things are going to be positioned relative to the price panel. So you've got a couple of different options in here. Uh, but I've set these up to be above because I want those relative strength lines above the price panel. And then I can custom order these by using these little up and down arrows. So you can move those indicators up, uh, up and down on your charts with these little uh, reorder arrows. So that's how we've set that up. We've put those most important indicators above the price panel. Again, I've got volume positioned actually behind the price panel. I want to see that one right within. And then I've got my additional indicators down here below. So we've got the RSI, we've got the accumulation distribution line, got that on balance volume as well, and our scooter line. I've set all of those, except for one, to be below. So you can see, uh, again, just like we did with uh, with above, we've set those to be, uh, be below the price panel. And then we've used those little reorder arrows to move things up and down. Now, one little trick that I've done in a very specific case is I've actually positioned one indicator behind another. So I'll go back up to the chart and uh, describe this uh, briefly here before we uh, wrap up today's episode. Uh, so we've got the accumulation distribution on this chart. We also have the on balance volume. Now those are very, very similar indicators. They're calculated in a slightly different way. They effectively look at um, the same thing, but sort of at different times of the day, uh, but they're judging money flow. Are people buying this stock? Are people selling this stock? Where is the money flowing in or out of this stock uh, using, uh, using some volume analysis there? So I like both of these indicators again, because they're sort of addressing the same thing, but at different times of day. Now, accumulation distribution to me is a little bit more important. On balance volume is kind of secondary to accumulation distribution, uh, even though they're very, very similar. So again, I've done kind of some visual hierarchy here by fading out that on balance volume line. I've actually positioned it behind the accumulation distribution, and then I've faded it out to be a little bit more gray. 
Now, there are a couple ways to do this. Uh, in this case, actually, I've positioned that on balance volume right below accumulation distribution here in the settings. And then I've set that to be behind indicator. So that's going to put it behind it. Uh, now, I have actually just set the color of it to be gray. So that's going to change it to be a gray line. The gray line is going to end up being kind of faded out relative to the black line. But I could have also used the opacity settings here. I could set this as a black line and then change the opacity to be something lower. If I wanted to make this, for instance, a color, let's say I wanted my, uh, my accumulation distribution to actually be green. Maybe I wanted my on balance volume to be green as well. And I want it to be sort of a more faded out green. We could do something like this, set those up. Now what we're going to end up with is a green accumulation distribution line. And we're going to have a faded out green on balance volume line. So again, you can kind of use some of those settings around the workbench to build this visual hierarchy into your charts. So that is our show for today. We're talking about prioritizing indicators and overlays on your charts. We can do this in a couple of creative ways. We can actually use chart styles to do this by building in a little bit of that kind of chart leveling system that we were looking at, starting with the most important indicators and overlays that you want to see first, and then building up additional chart styles that sort of bring in more and more indicators, more and more overlays, new settings, new, uh, new changes to those charts. So building up that kind of leveling system, that was our first stop on today's show. The first and uh, I think the easiest way to really kind of build in some of this priority order. But we also took a look at how to build this into the charts themselves by using some of those visual settings that you have available to you on the Sharp Charts workbench. Coloring those moving averages in different ways, coloring volume, positioning indicators above or below and in a specific order, even positioning some indicators behind others. So lots of different ways to do this. Now, these are the indicators and the overlays that I personally use in my approach to the markets. Your set of indicators and overlays, your go-tos might be very, very different. Whatever it is, though, I'm sure that you have your order, your priority to those indicators and those overlays. So hopefully this has given you some creative ideas for how to sort of bake that prioritization into your charts. Again, I think this is kind of making your charts work for you, help you help yourself, if you will. Uh, you can kind of build this in and then you're not sort of fighting your own eyeballs. You know, when you pull up a chart, instead of having everything screaming at you at the same volume, you can really sort of build in some of these settings so that things speak to you a little bit differently. As we were showing there with the moving averages and with the volume, things speak to me a little bit differently. Those two specific moving averages, the 50 and the 200, they speak to me a little bit different uh, from those other moving averages because they're a little bit brighter, a little bit thicker, a little bit easier to see. They kind of jump off the screen first and foremost. So that's how I've set up my charts. I find that this really kind of helps me stay true to the indicators, the overlays, the signals, the moves that I really want to see on the chart. So I know we covered a ton on today's show. There is even more to see because if we jump over to ACP, we can do all of this same stuff over there. Some creative ways to build in this visual hierarchy in that new advanced charting platform as well. If we did that, my account over in ACP looks exactly the same as what we were showing off in Sharp Charts. The same concepts with those chart leveling, the same concepts with some of those coloring, you know, visual hierarchies built into the charts. I've got all that set up in ACP as well. So these same concepts apply over there. You can use the settings over in the ACP side of things to do the exact same things with your charts. So I want to thank you so much for joining me on today's show. It's been a blast to put my own account on display, talk to you about some of the, uh, the tools, tips, and tricks that I use, some of the ways that I've set up things for my own approach. I want to remind you that we do this show every Friday, 5 p.m. Eastern time on Stock Charts TV. A couple of different ways to watch. You can check it out on the live channel at stockcharts.com slash TV. Look for that Stock Charts TV link at the top of any page around the site. Also, our YouTube channel after it airs, though, you can go check us out on YouTube. Find this show, find previous editions that we did. Like I mentioned, we talked about those chart levels in a, a previous episode of the show. So if that intrigued you, you can actually go back on the YouTube channel, search for that chart levels, and you'll be able to find that episode that we did. We'll put a link in the, script, the uh, description below as well. But also, you can watch on our on-demand platform, stockchartstv.com. Totally free to sign up over there. Gives you access across all the apps, Roku, Apple TV, Chromecast, all that good stuff. So lots of ways to watch. 
But ultimately, here on this show, Stock Charts and Focus, we try to help you get more value out of Stock Charts. That's our mission every Friday. So hopefully, you'll join me again soon for another episode every Friday, Stock Charts in Focus. By the way, I just want to remind you, that new special from Arthur Hill coming out tomorrow, mark your calendars for that, all about trend following. We got big things coming up next week with the addition of our new relative volume plugin. Very exciting stuff. Excited to walk you through that on next week's show. And mark your calendars, November 29th, Cyber Monday. Big things coming to stock charts. Always a big month here in November. So definitely mark your calendars for that important date at the end of the month. My name is Grayson Rose. Vice President of Operations here at Stock Charts. It's been good to be with you. Thanks for tuning in to today's show. I'll see you soon for another episode. But until then, chart on, my friends. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.